Hi everyone, so nice to see you back. So today we are going to talk about the great traits, behavioral traits of both fantastic Olympians and great leaders. So what are the common behavioral traits of Olympians and great leaders? And I thought that would be really, really interesting. So that's what we are going to talk about today. Stay with me as we work through all these points right to the end. There's a lot of learning in here today. So there are 13 points we're going to talk about. And the first one is dedication and discipline. Anyone can become an Olympian without dedication and discipline. And neither can one become a great leader without dedication and discipline. And when we talk of Olympians, one of the most famous, the most decorated Olympian of all time is Michael Phelps. With a fantastic 23 gold medals. Can you imagine that? 23 gold medals, 3 silvers and 1 bronze. They say he trained for 365 days a year for 5 years leading up to the Olympics. The Beijing Olympics in 2008. Trained for 365 days without taking a single day off. That's dedication and discipline, isn't it? If you look at leaders, Winston Churchill. During the Second World War, it was really Winston Churchill who helped to set the mindset of the United Kingdom, bring them into the war, and then somehow defeat Hitler. Dedication and discipline. And Steve Jobs, another great leader, took Apple right up there, isn't it? He's known for his relentless work ethic and dedication, puts in the long hours, puts in the hard work, keeps pushing until finally he succeeds. So the number one, discipline and dedication. The second trait is resilience and perseverance. So a fantastic story of Kerry Stroog, where during the 1996 Olympics, this gymnast actually did her final vault on an injured ankle. Imagine that, doing a vault incredibly difficult on an injured an ankle and getting a gold for her team. That shows incredible resilience and perseverance. Not giving up no matter what, somehow wanting to win, somehow wanting to, you know, do your best in spite of all odds. Nelson Mandela, one of the greatest leaders of all time, 27 years in jail in a small room, sees another human being only once for 30 minutes once a year, 27 years in jail. What does he do in that 27 years? He's making his plan. How is he going to build this rainbow nation called South Africa when he comes out? How is he going to bring equality to all the people of South Africa and build this country? Resilience and perseverance, never giving up in the face of so much of difficulty. Number three is vision setting and goal setting. Hussein Bolt, probably the best sprinter of all time. He became the fastest man in the world and he's still the fastest man in the world. His vision was clear. He wanted to be the fastest man in the world with nine goals in the Olympics, in three Olympics. That's over a period of eight years, right? Nine goals. Four world records, including an incredible 9.58 seconds for the 100 meters. He set his vision, he had his goals, he set his goal, and then he worked hard to achieve it. So setting a vision, a clear vision. When we take Martin Luther King, he had a vision. He had a dream. His famous, I have a dream speech. I have a dream that my children, our children, will be able to live together, grow up together, have fun together. I have a dream that there will be equality for everyone everywhere. I'm just paraphrasing here, but you get the point, right? His famous, I have a dream speech was also his famous, I have a vision speech. The vision was clear and he was even willing to lay down his life to achieve his vision and his goal. Work ethic is number four. And a great story of Nadia Komeneci when she scored a perfect 10 in gymnastics in 1976 at the Montreal Olympics. Imagine, perfect 10. Nobody gives a perfect 10. Nadia did it. Imagine the rigorous work ethic, the hard work, the dedication, the discipline she would have had to go through. Fantastic work ethic, isn't it? Michael Jordan, fantastic NBA player, also an Olympian. They say that Michael Jordan, even when he was the best in the world at basketball when the practice was over with his team and everyone else was off in the showers getting ready to go home what does michael jordan do he puts in another hour on the court on his own that's work ethic isn't it you're right up there everyone else has gone off 
but you're putting in more work. Don't you think it's because he put in this more work that he got to where he was and he stayed there. Fantastic work ethic, isn't it? Lots of us, you know, want to do the minimum and get the maximum. Where's the work ethic? The more we put in, the better we are going to become. And once we are world number one, yeah, you think it's going to be less work or more work? It's more, right? Because we need to put in more to stay there. Work ethic, right? And when we look at leadership, Thomas Edison says, one of his famous quotes is, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. And we know he, he worked really hard. He worked really hard. One of the greatest inventors of all time. They say he conducted thousands of experiments to finally invent the light bulb. Number five is mental toughness. And no one exemplifies this better than Simone Biles. Has shown incredible mental toughness. Overcoming so many personal and physical challenges to become one of the best gymnasts of all time. So what, what has Simone Biles done? She has competed at the highest levels including 2016 in Rio at the Olympics and 2020 Tokyo and now 2024 in Paris. So far she has got five goals, one silver and one bronze and at the recent 2024 Olympics she got another three goals and this is under intense scrutiny, intense pressure. In 2020 in Tokyo she actually withdrew from the Olympics, she didn't take part. Well, she took part in the Tokyo Olympics, but she also withdrew from several events to focus on her mental health. And she said, I'm doing this. And there was a lot of flack that she got for, for that as well, right? A lot of scrutiny. But that's also great, isn't it? Making the decision, you know, I need to do this. Wanting to withdraw from something also takes a lot of mental toughness. She has dealt with so much of injuries, adversity, physical challenges. She has been able to always recover from these injuries and come back even stronger. And lots of leaders today as well have to show mental toughness. Organizations go through bad times, right? Go close to bankruptcy. And how do we actually turn this around? They say, they say that, uh, uh, that Donald Trump actually, he went bankrupt once, lost, lost everything. And the mental toughness, yeah, I'm going to come back. I know how to do it. I did it once before. I can do it again. That's mental toughness. And it's, it's a great thing. To have isn't it so we are never going to go through life without setbacks there are always going to be setbacks as uh, Sylvester Stallone famously said in the movie Rocky yeah it doesn't matter how hard life hits you what matters is how fast you get up because all we are always going to get hit life is going to hit us so we have to have the mental toughness the resilience to get back up there again and move keep moving forward keep moving forward keep achieving keep succeeding they're not going to be easy but that's what mental toughness is all about self-motivation is number six and a great story again a great olympic story of this lady wilma rudolph she suffered from polio as a child but still she went on to become the first american woman to win three gold medals in track and field at a single olympics in 1960 isn't that fantastic overcoming such a debilitating sickness like polio as a child going on to win three goals Winning even one gold at an Olympic, winning even one bronze at an Olympic is huge, is fantastic. That needs a lot of self-motivation, a lot of self-drive. Actually, every Olympian we have spoken of so, so far also has been self-motivated. You cannot become an Olympian without being self-motivated. You cannot become a great leader without being self-motivated. And Oprah Winfrey, when we look at leadership, right, she had such a challenge in childhood, isn't it? Grew up in poverty. They say she was, she was abused as a, as a young child. And today, she's one of the most iconic, well-known, successful, powerful women in the world. Self-driven, self-motivated, oh for sure, isn't it? And even, although I personally don't, don't really like uh, politicians much, you take politicians, sometimes they have been in politics 70 years, 50 years, 60 years, still there, when there's so much of opposition. I think there's a lot of self-motivation, there's a lot of resilience, there's a lot of drive, there's a lot of determination, there's a lot of staying power there as well. Not easy. Not easy to be able to take flack from all sides and still keep moving, isn't it? But yes, there's something we can admire in the politicians as well. Continuous improvement. We cannot succeed in life without continuously moving forward. If you're 1% better today than you were yesterday, that means we are moving forward. 
or forget the one percent. If we are a little bit better today than we were yesterday, it means we are moving forward. Think about it. If each day we are a little bit better than the day before, after one year, we won't even recognize ourselves. And that's continuous improvement. That's moving forward. Uh, there's a great book uh, called The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Compound Effect. And it's about continuous improvement. If we, if we keep doing something small each day, there's going to be continuous improvement. And there's going to be radical change after six months, after one year. Because the compound effect is going to kick in. We work hard. We exercise each day. Compound effect. After a while, you won't recognize yourself. We do the reverse. We don't exercise each day. We just eat a little bit more each day. After a while, there's going to be a compound effect. We won't recognize ourselves. Continuous improvement. One of the best examples of continuous improvement in the Olympics was Carl Lewis. I was a teenager when Carl Lewis won his medals. Yeah, and I, I used to have his picture uh, hung up uh, on the wall in my, in my bedroom. Yeah, somebody I was really looking up to. Of course, I was an awful athlete, but I, I had an idol in Carl Lewis at the time, right? He went on to win nine Olympic gold medals over four different Olympic Games. That's, that's incredible staying power as well. Four Olympic Games spanned across 12 years, isn't it? And we spoke about Michael Jordan earlier. Another, another gentleman who was always trying to be better, always trying to improve. Little by little, little by little, always trying to improve. And that's, that's fantastic. And when you go to Microsoft, leaders organizational leaders, corporate leaders, they say that Bill Gates continuously was trying to improve Microsoft's product and services. Right? His philosophy was constant innovation and improvement. Another great icon, corporate icon, Jack Welch. Continuous improvement was part of his mantra. We have to continuously keep getting better. When we look at number eight, leadership and teamwork. See, 1992, the US Olympic basketball team was a group of stars. They were all stars. Each one was a star in their own right. Imagine putting a group of stars together. They're not going to work as a team. <laughs> and it was a nightmare. Initially, it was a nightmare. The team just wasn't clicking. This reminds me also of when uh, uh, Michael Jackson and uh, Lionel Richie uh, did We Are The World as a song. And who was going to sing, the, sing, sing for this song? They got all the big stars to come one night into a recording studio, non-stop, record the song. And you know something that they said? They had put up a big board just outside the recording studio saying, leave your egos at the door and, and come in. Yeah? Because when you put all stars together, nothing is going to get done because everyone is going to have an opinion. And when they actually put this sign up saying, leave your egos at the door, things actually worked much, much better. Little bit of egos were there, but much less than otherwise, isn't it? And that was the same thing with the 1992 US men's basketball team. So much of egos, it wasn't clicking. Until Magic Johnson actually took, took the lead and he was able to unite and inspire his teammates, bring them together as a team. By his selflessness, right? Yeah, his charisma and leadership style. He would not want to score baskets for himself. And even if he had an opportunity to score, he'll make sure he passes the ball one of the teammates. Making use of the team, giving more to, creating more opportunities for the team. It was never about self for Magic Johnson. Right? So that's incredible leadership and teamwork. Right? A leader, it's never about self for the leader. If the leader wants to be a great leader, it's about building a fantastic team, which can then help the organization to achieve its goals. So it's, it's the leader creating opportunities for the team, helping the team, growing the team, that's what, that's what makes a great leader. So again, Magic Johnson, it was his positive attitude and his respect for his teammates, all a group of stars, right, that helped blend the diverse talents, right, bring all the diverse talents together and create that dream team. On a personal note, I was a choral conductor of a group called The Revelations and we became world champions twice in choral music, right? Just eight of us, well, 10 of us for some of the categories and eight of us for some, right? And in this 10, 10 uh, men, we had an age range of 30 years from the youngest to the oldest, right? And within the 10 of us, we had about six or seven who were also choral directors in their own right. They had their own choirs. They were all talented, right? So that was me trying to lead a group of all stars. It wasn't easy to do, but we did it by bringing everyone together, having a common vision, having a common goal, having mutual respect, and we were able to do it. 
So building team spirit and collaboration becomes extremely important. Another leader, well-known leader, Mahatma Gandhi. It was Gandhi's leadership that helped India get independence. It was his ability to bring together people who were so, you know, they, 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 didn't, get, they didn't get on <laughs> with each other. But he was able to unite, bring people together and work towards a common goal. And it was his principles of non-violence and teamwork that really brought the entire nation of millions together. Where even today, he is, he is so looked up to, so revered in India. Number nine on our list of great traits of Olympians and leaders is focus and concentration. And when we talk of Olympians, no one fits this mold better than Alison Felix with 11 medals, seven goals, three silvers and one bronze. She's one of the most decorated athletes in Olympic history, spanning five Olympic games from 2004 to 2020 in Tokyo. Fantastic, isn't it? Five Olympic games, that's a massive career. And she was able to be focused and concentrate for over two decades. She also overcame great personal adversity, numerous challenges, and she was always able to focus, recover, come back even stronger. She also balanced her roles as a mother, as an athlete, but she was able to do that. One of the examples of Alison Felix's uh, focusing skills uh, is at the 2020 Olympics. It was a very challenging period for her. She had a public battle over maternity rights with her sponsor, just recovering from an emergency uh, C-section, but she came back. She focused, she worked hard, and she won her 10th and 11th Olympic medals in Tokyo. 2020. So she was able to focus, concentrate. And that's so important, right? There's always going to be noise around us. When we have a goal, we have a vision, we need to just shut out the noise, focus. Focus on the goal, go for it without any disturbance. And that's going to really help us become successful. And when we talk of the corporate world, Jeff Bezos, right? Amazon's founder, his focus is on customer experience and making sure we have a long-term strategy of being customer-centric, being the world's most customer-centric company. So it's all about the customer. Our focus is all about the customer. How do we give this customer the best experience? And of course, we have to adapt because there is going to be change. The environment is going to change. But still, keeping our focus on the customer, how do we give this customer the best experience possible? So there's been a relentless focus on customer satisfaction, on keeping the customer in the center. Not profits in the center, but customer in the center. And if we keep customer in the center, the profits are going to follow, isn't it? Because the customer loves being in the center. Number 10 is passion and enthusiasm. When we think of the Olympics, no one better exemplifies this than Katie Ledecky. Seven goals and three silvers. Her, she's so passionate about swimming and her enthusiasm is driving her to break records and push the limits of what's possible in swimming. And that passion is driving the achievements. So how did she become passionate? At the age of six, she was inspired by her older brother. And then she started, she started being very passionate about swimming. She won her first Olympic gold at just at the tender age of 15 and has not looked back since. She has multiple world records. She holds the world records in the 400, 800, and 1,500 uh, freestyle events. Three world records. Yeah, isn't that fantastic? Another great story about passion in the Olympic Games is one of my personal favorites, Eric Little. Have you watched the film Chariots of Fire? There's a lot about Eric Little in this, in this film, Chariots of Fire. So he was a Scottish sprinter and rugby player. And he was a very, very passionate person about his religion. He was very committed, very dedicated uh, to being a Christian. So in the 1924 Paris Olympics, he was tipped to win the 100 meters. But then the organizers, what did they do? They scheduled the 100 meters on the Sunday. And Eric Little said, no, I'm, going to, I'm not going to run because it's the Sabbath. It's the day that I take uh, holy. I'm not going to run on the Sunday, right? It's the day of rest. So he withdrew from the 100 meters, his favorite event, although he was supposed to win that, he was tipped to win. And he decided, I'm going to take part in the 400 meters. Imagine a 100 meter sprinter at the same Olympic Games, hasn't trained for the 400, now decides I'm going to, I'm going to do the 400. Incredible, isn't it? It's, it's an entirely different race. It needs a different type of strength. But Eric Little was passionate about his sport as he was passionate about religion. And he decides, I'm going to do the 400. And he wins it. <laughs> and he doesn't only win it, 
he also sets a new world record of 47.6 seconds at that time 1924 after that he decides okay i'm so passionate about religion i'm going to go to china and become a missionary so he moves to china then after a while it's world war 2 and he's interned in a japanese camp and even in the camp his passion for service for sport and for religion comes through right he organizes games he teaches children he helps them uh, develop their athletic skill right and he keeps inspiring people around him so isn't that a great story about passion and when we look at the corporate sector right richard branson one of the most passionate leaders isn't it he 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 has created so many companies under the virgin group so passionate about what he does including flying <laughs> flying off in a balloon isn't it whatever he does he does with passion no half measures so many times he has done like almost life threatening uh, things right going off in a balloon across so many uh, so many kilometers not really wanting to take that risk not really caring about his his own life also because he's passionate about what he was he wants to experience new things number 11 is adapting adaptability in the 1936 berlin olympics hitler's olympics in germany what was hitler trying to prove hitler was trying to prove that there was a master race white skin people with blue eyes and golden hair the master race asians were looked at as being less chinese looked at as being less and so who 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 uh, disproves this uh, theory of uh, hitlers but no none other than the famous jesse owens black american comes over from from the us and actually wins <laughs> so many four gold medals at the 1936 berlin olympics yeah when he, hitler says the master race are the whites blue eyes and golden hair and who is winning the golds but a black american from from the us jesse owens right so he jesse owens had to adapt right he comes to germany and then there's there's adversity it's not not easy right uh, running under under all this nazi propaganda he adapted to the political climate of the time mark spitz another great fantastic swimmer right yeah adapted to being able to swim in uh, using different styles and winning seven gold medals at uh, 1972 again in germany seven gold medals in different events he does the butterfly he does the freestyle he does the medley and sets world records in each one is is that fantastic you have to most people specialize in one event mark spitz does so many <laughs> adapting from one event to the other what needs to be done how do you need to yeah still win so he had to adapt his training and his techniques by swimming as well right in the different styles and the distances and now that story of adaptation of mark spitz just before the munich olympics in 1968 he didn't perform as well as he wanted but then after that he adapted his training style he didn't say okay i have lost i can't win i'm a loser no he changed he adapted and he came back even stronger winning seven medals so he was actually known for his innovative training techniques yeah he was using weight training new methods to improve his starts to improve his turns and that's also very important right adaptation not trying to just do the same old thing day in and day out look for new ways of doing things in the field of uh, choral music i have a, i have done a lot of adaptation not sticking to the standard not sticking to the conventional ways of doing things we have tried different things from time to time some people have laughed at us but we have tried it and it has been successful and i'm so proud to say that that under my choral direction i have brought back so many international medals back to sri lanka from the different choirs that i conducted and it wasn't so much about talent but it was about adaptation it was about being different it was about trying new different things but of course being committed being you know out, out there as well right being committed having the dedication the discipline the perseverance the mental toughness the resilience all of these things that we are uh, talking about Number 12 integrity and honesty and a great story there is about a, a first african to actually win an olympic gold medal a baby bikila he won the 1960 rome marathon running barefoot and he was very honest about his humble beginnings and his integrity his integrity really shone through right integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is watching okay michael jordan integrity put it in the hard work doing the right thing for himself for his team even when no one is watching because it only matters what what are you doing what do you know about yourself what do you want to achieve right doesn't matter who's who's watching another great politician great leader who was so honest and had such a lot of integrity abraham lincoln he was also given the nickname honest abe so it was lincoln's integrity and honesty that really you know helped him 
uh, to overcome so much of adversity, so much of odds in the American Civil War. His commitment to truth and justice, it is said, helped preserve the United States as the United States. And number 13, the last one, is about having a great positive attitude. And no one exemplifies this better than Gabby Douglas, the first African-American woman to win a gold in gymnastics. It was a positive attitude and infectious smile, you know, that they say has been key to her success. 2012 London Olympics, she became the first African-American woman to win the all-round gold in gymnastics and she also helped the US team win the team gold medal as well. So she was successful in 2012. Then she faced immense pressure, a lot of scrutiny. She took a break, right, to get over all these problems, right, and people never thought that she'd come back. But come back she did in Rio in 2016, where she once again helped the US team win another team gold medal. So what are the challenges that she faced through which she had to maintain this positive attitude? There was racial discrimination. Right? As I said earlier, she was the first African-American woman to win a gold. Very few African-American gymnasts. It was a sport dominated by whites. And so they didn't want her in there. She was discriminated against. She had financial struggles. Her family wasn't well off. And gymnastics is a very expensive sport if you want to be at the highest level. There were a lot of injuries and setbacks. Right? She was injured. Through all this, she kept a positive attitude. So it's not only the positive attitude that made her successful, right? There was mental toughness, uh, determination, commitment, hard work, discipline, resilience, all of this. So it's like the complete package, isn't it? We need to have all these 13 factors in order to be a great Olympian or be a great leader. Personally also, I have always tried to have a positive attitude right through whatever I have been doing. So many setbacks, tried so many things and failed. We can't be a great leader. We can't be a leader at all if we are not prepared to fail and if we don't have a positive attitude. Research says that 9 out of 10 companies that are started, new companies, will fail. 9 out of 10 new products launched will fail. <laughs> Does that mean we shouldn't launch a new product? We shouldn't start a new company? No, it, it doesn't. Right? We need to have a positive attitude and keep moving forward. I've tried so many things in my life, failed at many, succeeded at some. And there have always been people who have told me, Sanjeev, don't try that, you're going to fail. But if you dream about something, if you're committed, you're passionate about something, keep chasing that dream because it's going to happen at some point. Right? Don't give up on your dreams. Have a positive attitude. And a positive attitude is a great thing to have for life as well, isn't it? Is the glass half empty or half full? Take a glass, fill it exactly half with water and now what's that glass somebody can say that glass is half empty and that's having a negative attitude somebody else could say that glass is half full and that's having a positive attitude but it's absolutely the same glass isn't it it's the way we look at things somebody has a problem they say it's a problem somebody else sees it as a challenge as an opportunity it's all how we see things all about having a positive attitude Another great positive attitude, right, was Derek Ed Redmond uh, in, the, in the 1992 Olympics, the 400 meters. Halfway through the race, he pulled his hamstring, couldn't run. But he had such a positive attitude, he wanted to finish the race. So he kept limping and limping and hobbling till he reached the finish line. A little, just a little bit before the finish line, his father actually came, put his arm around him, hugged him and helped him over the finish line. Walked with him over the finish line. Uh, one of the most touching moments in, in Olympic history, I think. Great positive attitude. And as we discussed, leaders have had, have had great positive attitudes as well. And to be a great leader, we need to have a great positive attitude. So, what are the 13 traits of great Olympians and great leaders? Number one, being dedicated and having a great discipline. Right? Being resilient, number two, and persevering. Persevering... Uh, 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 across great odds, through adversity, through difficulties, moving forward. Having a vision and setting goals for yourself. Very important. If you don't have a goal, it doesn't matter where we are going <laughs> because we'll never know where we, where we get to because there's no goal, right? Having a great work ethic and integrity. Integrity comes in later as well, but having a great, great work ethic, number four. Mental toughness, number five. Number six, being self-motivated. No matter 
Is there anyone to help us, anyone to motivate us or not? We need to be self-motivated. Continuous improvement. Each day being a little bit better than we were before. Leadership and teamwork. Building a great team. As a leader, we need to show leadership, build a great team, lead from the front, walk the talk, show by example. Number nine, focus and concentration. We cannot get anywhere without being focused and without concentrating. Yeah, and today our devices are moving us away from focus and concentration. Number 10, passion and enthusiasm. We need to be, a, be passionate about what we are doing. If I'm a leader and I'm not passionate, why should my team be passionate about what I'm saying? We need to be passionate if our followers, people in our team are going to be passionate as well, right? Passion, enthusiasm is really contagious. There's another video which I put out a little while uh, earlier, a few weeks ago. Pathos, logos and ethos. Pathos says you can't be a great communicator without being passionate about what you have to say. And you can't be a great leader also without being passionate about what you're trying to do for the organization. Passion is going to build your team, bring people together. Number 11, adapting. Having adaptability as your trait, very important because things are never going to remain the same, right? One of the only constants is change. Everything is going to change around us. And when things change, we need to change. We need to adapt as well. Number 12, integrity and honesty. What employees say that they want to see most in their leaders. We don't care how clever the leader is. What we want is a leader who has integrity and honesty. And that's, that's some of the two of the most important traits. And finally, number 13, positive attitude. With all of this, we need to have a positive attitude. Because things are going to go wrong, we need to keep moving forward. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been really great spending time with you, taking you through this stuff. The 13 traits of great Olympians and great leaders. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do give me a like if you liked the video. Give us a comment, tell us what you felt. right? And don't forget to subscribe for more great content like this. It's been a great pleasure having you with me, uh, talking to you about these traits. Till the next one. So do, do stay around. I'll see you soon at the next video. Till then, stay safe and stay blessed. I'm Sanjeev.